tonight we play with boost controllers. All right, these are our three baseline runs for the day. You can see I finally got one to start a little bit lower. Um, so, you know, 117, 117, 118. Um, that last run that made 0.3 more PSI. Woo! Um, but, you know, statistically, all very similar. The air fuel is the uh, solid line there on the bottom graph. You can just see it goes Ricky Rich there up top. Almost the exact opposite of what you want it to. It's about 13 to 1 there at 3,500, and then it just kind of goes from there. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put the first boost controller on there, and we're going to shoot for 14 PSI. Simplicity has its bonuses, um, and it pretty much only took me about two shots to get it get it about perfect. I mean, everybody knows the, the little turbos are spiky, so that's what you're seeing there. It spiked to about 16 and a half, and then came back down and settled down to about 15, and then you know tapered off. If I had exhaust on the car, it might stay up there. I might have to you know, dial it down a little bit. But there you can see the power gains. Pretty consistent. Um, I think it knocked a little bit on the second pull. I didn't hear it. Maybe when I watch the video, I'll hear it. But I didn't hear it in the car. But, uh, you know, 209 foot-pounds of torque. Pretty big, uh, pretty big jump. Um, I will say... Based on this, it looks like it actually was richer up top, but maybe not. Yeah, no, it looks like it was pretty consistently rich. It looks like the light green line, 
is, is just barely following the dot the dotted you know the graph lines there and then everything else looks like it's down here I'll get some individual shots later when I'm uh, talking about these things specifically but uh, this will probably work for the shenanigans tonight uh, and I'm gonna play with the other two boost controllers I don't know that I'm gonna put both videos out tonight I may not get all three of them tested kind of depends on how it goes but uh, yeah I'm actually impressed by the little that little one right there it um, seemed to work pretty good all right here we go this is the first first boost controller the the relative no-name one that came in a little ziploc baggie uh, compared with the best uh, straight up stock boost run there uh, you can see it picked up 60 foot pounds give or take and pretty decent amount of power not not totally surprising uh, that's kind of what they do it's usually why everybody's first modification is a boost controller um, and then you know it's worth mentioning this is not on a tuned ECU so that's part of what you're seeing up top here on the on the run at stock boost it looks like it just barely dipped below you know 10 to 1 AFRs which is way plenty rich they're just past about you know, pretty close to red line there about 5800 rpms um, the line below that, that that almost looks like it's you know tracking straight that guy oh there we go get a little better that guy you can tell pretty much bottomed out right there at about five grand um, but was headed bad at about 4800 um, coming across you see that that midpoint there's about this should be about 12.5 you know things weren't looking terrible 3500 really at about four grand for both of them it wasn't wasn't awful although uh the extra boost kind of delayed the pain a little bit there and then it just kind of went went to shit up top um i think on that run it, it might have picked up a little bit of knock and that's why you see that it kind of goes up and then it gets you know sharp over would have liked to have seen it a little bit richer right there at the torque hit but you know again this is not a tuned ECU um, and then up top I guess the question really is why <laughs> why manually shift it out just let it shift at 5,000 or whatever it wants to shift at because I mean it's it's done there uh, especially stock exhaust we'll um, we'll look at some of that stuff later on a on another evening or afternoon when it's not, you know, 9.45 and everybody's asleep in the neighborhood.